Barely three months after the first bombs fell on Fort Sumter, the first major battle of the Civil War took place on the outskirts of Manassas, Virginia, July 21st, 1861. The Union Army was bent on taking Richmond, and control of the railroad junction in Manassas was a strategic first target. Both the South and the North naively thought the battle would be quick and mild, so much so that more than 250 civilians, including a couple senators, came out from Washington, D.C. in their carriages to watch the battle. The first battle of Manassas Bull Run resulted in nearly 5,000 casualties and more than 840 deaths. The Union Army, overwhelmed by the rebels, retreated to the safety of Washington, D.C. The bloody, brutal war that would ultimately claim more than 600,000 dead and more than a million casualties was on. I'm your host, travel correspondent Tom Wilmer. Please join us on the hallowed grounds of Manassas Bull Run Battlefield as we visit with park ranger Gregory Wolfe as he shares his insights into the first battle as well as the second battle of Bull Run Manassas a year later in August 1862. Ranger Gregory Wolf. Hi, Greg. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. Tell us about what is so important about Manassas. Why is it such an iconic shrine? Well, the Civil War uh, is our nation's most traumatic and significant event. Uh, four years' time in the 1860s, uh, fratricidal conflict regarding the rights of the federal government vis-a-vis -vis that of various states and the sticky uh, emotional topic of slavery as well. Quite a few individuals are going to be directly impacted by the war. 622,000 American soldiers die during the four years of fighting. Uh, two of the major battles are fought here within what's now this peaceful park-like preserve in northern Virginia. Broadly speaking, the armies are going to fight quite a few times in Virginia because Virginia is the frontier of the Confederacy, the furthest north and east state of the collection of southern states calling themselves the Confederacy. And of course the national capital, Washington, is found right across the Potomac River. You're talking literally a short drive even by horse and buggy to get to DC. Yeah, we're just 26 miles west of the national capital. In their time period, using a horse and wagon, you could make the trip in less than a day. Sure. And isn't it true that there were spectators that came out from D.C. to watch the battles. That's right. The first fight, a one-day affair on July 21 of 1861, was the first major fight of the whole war, and our nation was pretty ignorant and innocent about warfare, and a good number of civilians, somewhere around two or three hundred, traveled outbound from D.C. to witness the fight. They wanted to cheer on the hometown team as they thumped the rebels in their march on to Richmond. There were congressmen and senators among them. Pretty amazing, isn't it? Their first real indication about who wins the fight is when the bloody and demoralized Union Army starts retreating back through their midst, trying to get through them back to D.C. There were two battles here. You talked about the second one. Why did it happen again at the same location? Well, the battles occur on slightly different acreage, but the nearby rail junction town of Manassas two times serves as a magnet, drawing armies into the area. Whoever controlled the rail junction had an easy transportation corridor in three directions, and whoever didn't control it wanted it for the same reason. So two times it brings armies nearby. So the, the intent of the battle was for control of the railway. The first fight, Manassas is a Confederate-controlled place, and Union soldiers are seeking to seize it in their campaign onto Richmond. They were thwarted. They were stopped here, five miles north of the town, in what's now the park. The second battle, the roles are reversed. It's actually a Union-controlled supply depot while they were campaigning deeper, further to the south and west, into Virginia, from the perspective of their base camp of D.C. However, the Confederates made a bold raid around the Union Army's positions to sack and pillage their supply base. They struck the sensitive nerve of the Union Army, and it worked like a charm. It extracted the Union forces from a pretty strong position on the banks of the Rappahannock River and then they spread themselves out all over the map trying to converge upon the Confederates and the Confederates baited them into attacking them here on the acreage where they had their first major success of the war. Let's say that you and your wife had a farm a quarter mile from here or from Manassas and you're a southerner and a southern sympathizer during the period of Union occupation. Was there a move to 
move people out, or how did they control their enemy in their midst? Quite a few Virginia civilians are going to voluntarily leave the area. They're going to live as refugees somewhere else to get away from armies, not just the Union guys, but also even their own, because the Confederate soldiers are seizing local foodstuffs and fence rails. They're living off the land as well. The farmers generally grew enough food to feed their own mouths, and they sell the remainder to buy other things. They don't grow enough to feed 50, 80, thousand more mouths. So a lot of civilians after the first major fight in their backyard here, they choose to leave the area because the Confederates win the fight and they continue to camp out in the area for the next eight or nine months. So by the time of the second battle, this area would look kind of like a moonscape. The forests had been cut down for use as firewood during that first winter of the war. A lot of abandoned and damaged homes, the bleached bones of horses and oxen and cows and pigs. The, and there were uh, hastily buried soldier graves as well from the first battle, which were recognizable for the soldiers in this area for the second fight 13 months later. Over my shoulder, there's a statue, a very large, tall statue, bronze. Yeah, one of the most impressive monuments in the park is a big equestrian statue of a Virginian named Thomas Jonathan Jackson, who earns his famous nickname of Stonewall on Henry Hill during the first battle. Prior to this day, he's known by his birth name, Thomas, but... This is where he became Stonewall, by holding his line? Right. He gets the nickname courtesy of a colleague from South Carolina, a brigadier general with the name Barnard B. However, B receives some bullets here on this hilltop this afternoon, and he dies the next day. So he didn't live long enough to confirm or deny the gossip and stories spreading through his army about what he supposedly said or even what he meant. The heroic versions of what he said went out, however, because the Confederacy was an infant country. It had been around for a few months' time trying to achieve independence from the United States. And part of that effort, the government, the public, need heroic figures for the public to continue to rally around. So Stonewall Jackson becomes one of the first Confederate heroes of the war through his firm stand, his defensive line here on Henry Hill. And then his guys also turn the tables here. They make the first of the Confederate advances to capture the Union artillery pieces that were brought up here by the Northern Army. Artillery pieces right in front of us. Directly north of the visitor center, there's a line of six black iron guns called 10-pounder parrot rifles. And this represents the Union Army's position of the afternoon of the first battle. We can't say for certain that any of the gun tubes here were here. However, with date stamps of 1861 or earlier or 1862 on them, it's a good bet that they saw service on quite a few battlefields. In the middle distance, there is a beautiful, iconic farmhouse and then an obelisk next to it. Tell us what that represents and why that's here. The house that's here now is the 1870 replacement Henry House for the home that stood here in the midst of the first battle. So the house that's here now isn't a witness to the battle, but it serves as a tool to discuss the costs of war. The obelisk in the backyard is a brownstone monument built by Union soldiers here in the spring and summer of 1865. It's one of the earliest Civil War monuments in the whole country. So even though the Union Army didn't win this battle, they build a brownstone obelisk monument here to commemorate the Union dead. And one of the benefits of this type of landscape is not just so you can see it as the soldiers saw it, but it also eases your ability to think and reflect about why the park is here instead of just additional homes or commercial malls and what have you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. You're welcome. We've been speaking with Park Ranger Gregory Wolf at Manassas National Battlefield Park in Manassas, Virginia. I'm your host, travel correspondent Tom Wilmer, reporting for National Public Radio Affiliates, KCBX serving San Luis Obispo, KSBX serving Santa Barbara, and KNBX serving Southern Monterey County. If you came in late and you'd like to listen to this show in its entirety, you may do so anytime as an MP3 podcast on the web. Log on to www.kcbx.org. Click on Program Archives at the homepage and then click on Audiolog the Travel Show. Mm-hmm.